Yeah, so I'll acknowledge up front that I suffer from the curse of working at OpenAI where every day I go to work, I get to, uh, you know, train, uh, train amazing models. And, but I, I can't talk about that too much. Um, so uh, what I'll focus uh, this talk on is sort of um, s some work on robustness that I pursued while I was still a grad student and also uh, why that motivated me to uh, join the O1 team and uh, push forward this paradigm of reasoning. And I'll end with some uh, sort, of, sort of some notes on optimism of why I think this could help uh, a lot in terms of robustness. Yeah, so, um, so I'll just first give like a sort of high level picture of how I think about uh, robustness, which is that uh, I think of robustness as this empirical phenomenon in deep learning where we have, we can train these amazing models that sort of behave like black boxes, but if you give them in distribution inputs, you sort of get these amazing, incredible outputs. But uh, on the other hand, uh, if you uh, give uh, adversarially chosen inputs, then these models behave very unpredictably. And uh, this is sort of a, sort of a robust observation uh, across uh, you know, many different settings for deep learning. Um, and one thing I wanna uh, just like, I guess one simple point I wanna make in this talk is that uh, when we think about robustness, the uh, details matter for like what the specific like type of black box we are studying here is. And oftentimes uh, we should focus on studying the right black, black box or you know, even like, and if, uh, it's, and if it's not robust, maybe the solution is not to like necessarily like make incremental improvements, but to figure out like, you know, what's the way to redefine the paradigm you're working in so that like, so that robustness almost comes for free. Um, and so for LLMs in particular, um, you can think of like many different uh, threat models for uh, robustness where maybe the, uh, the most open is just white box access to the weights and here we probably you know, can't do much because uh, you have full control over the model. Um, and even like you know, one level down, if you just have fine tuning access, maybe an LLM provider can like monitor what you're doing with the model even that is uh, very hard to uh, defend because you can still uh, basically teach the model a new capability like some sort of uh, encryption key and then uh, teach the model, train the model for harm communicating in an encoded form. And so this is, uh, this is from uh, work I did on covert, covert uh, fine tuning attacks. But the thing about considering different models is that you know, this almost like goes away if you only allow prompting access to your model. Then you can't do these like very uh, difficult to defend against weight-based manipulations. You can't teach the model a new capability that no monitoring system uh, has. And, but for prompting, this is of course not enough. We still want to robustly train the models to refuse you know, certain types of harmful requests but here with just pure prompting access, uh, you still have these fundamental failure modes uh, from the R L RLHF process. And, uh, and so this is still like a very, it's a challenge that I don't think we have of, you know, like a water, watertight solution to. But one, uh, but m maybe we can do something different, change it from, you know, prompting access to more like the reasoning style access provided by O1 where instead of just have, having the model respond right away, you let the model think and reason and before providing a full response. And this uh, removes some of the fundamental, more fundamental obstructions from, the, from robustness in the, in the prompting model. So uh, let me delve a bit more into this example. Um, so uh, for jailbreak attacks that I'm worried about at a high level, the model you, uh, there's a prompt P that the model has been trained to refuse, uh, save for harmful behavior, and we're allowing the adversary to model, modify this prompt P to some different prompt P prime. And the, uh, oh, and the attack is, yeah, so here's the modified prompt, and the attack is successful if the modified prompt uh, is able to elicit this, uh, 
behavior that the model is supposed to refuse. And so uh, these jailbreak attacks uh, exploit fundamental uh, failure modes of RLHF. And so I'll highlight a couple of them from, the, uh, from my paper on jailbreaks. Where first um, is uh, compete, one of the first failure mode is competing objectives, where the model has been trained with multiple objectives. There's the pre-training uh, language modeling objective, uh, there's an instruction following objective, and there's also a safety objective. And these uh, you know, are like naturally going to have points where they conflict with each other. And so you can attack these models by forcing this sort of uh, choice, and that's exactly what this example does, where basically you are asking the model to start with a uh, sort of very innocent sounding instruction, and you start your response with absolutely here's, and then once that happens, the model, uh, language modeling instinct sort of takes over and it uh, responds to the request instead of refusing it. And as a result, the safety objective here falls by the wayside. So this is one example of how like, you know, this, we have this unaligned pre-training objective that sort of messes up, uh, messes up our RLHF model. Another example is uh, mismatch generation, generalization, where basically you have this like massive pre-training data set that's naturally going to be uh, much more diverse than your uh, safety uh, training data set. So you can ask, you know, what happens if you have a prompt that maybe you, so for prompts that are in distribution, you end up with uh, good generalization behavior. But if you have something, uh, that's out of your tra safety training distribution, but in your uh, pre-training distribution, you might have something uh, more unexpected. So here, if you just encode the input in base64, um, early version of Claude will happily respond to, uh, to this prompt. So this is another example of how we can, uh, we suffer from this sort of unlined pre-training objective. So, uh, so how can reasoning help here? And so this was uh, so one of my so this is something I was thinking about after working on this jailbreaks project was basically uh, like you know like one one very simple fix to all of this is to actually just ask the model to uh, generate a response to the given prompt, and then ask the model to just like reflect on that just even for a moment to decide whether or not this response is unsafe. And if it's unsafe, then, uh, or if it's safe, then you can just return the regular response. Otherwise, you can ask the model to generate a refusal. And this is a very uh, simple flow that can help a lot with most of the jailbreak attacks we see. And so for me, this was evidence that, you know, you, you did want the model to just reason um, that you did want to, like, that a very general fix could be that if the model is allowed to reason before generating the prompt, or the, generating the response, then you would have something, an opportunity at something much more robust. It's no longer, the model is no longer trying to, you know, like decode from base 64, uh, you know, follow your harmful instruction, and also reason about safety. It can, it can take longer if it needs in its chain of thought to reason. And so this is, and so this is, uh, you know, this is the more, general recipe that the way, a more general sort of paradigm for thinking about robustness that gives us many more opportunities than the usual uh, LLM interface. Yeah, so how does this work? Um, so luckily, uh, O1 was released not too long ago, so I can talk about these results. And so these are uh, from the wonderful safety team at OpenAI. And, um, and so what we see is that uh, for, uh, this is um, strong reject is a benchmark of adversarially chosen jailbreak attacks. And we see that with the opportunity to think these models become much more robust. Um, and you also see uh, improvements of the O1 family of models over uh, the GPT-40 baseline uh, on all of these uh, red teaming uh, jailbreak evals. And so we do see a lot of progress here. 
Of course, you know, these bars are not 100%. These models are far from perfect. And there are many examples of attacks that, you know, that don't quite, that aren't quite fixed by, you know, like more reasoning. For example, like if your safety policy is ambiguous on an edge case, sometimes you just need more feedback to understand what you should do in this uh, example. And so like the, uh, the historical jailbreaks uh, that Cass brought up is a good example where basically like you, you have to draw a line between like, you know, learning about how things were being informative about how things were done in the past versus being helpful for harmful tasks. Yeah. So uh, to summarize, I think it's important when thinking about robustness to consider carefully the, uh, the sort of paradigm of AI that you're working with. Um, there are many options and I think oftentimes when you are non-robust, this, uh, this is a reflection of more of failure of the paradigm. Uh, and, and so you should try to, and so maybe instead of just like trying to fix models within that paradigm, it's oftentimes a hint uh, towards some expansion of the paradigm that could be very effective. And I think uh, for now, uh, reasoning is that, that if we are able to scale up reasoning to get it to work really well, then we will, be, we, will we have a much better sh shot on goal at much more robust uh, language model systems. Yeah, thank you.